agenda to host and um, I participated in this thing last July, which was part of 350.org's summer heat, you know, series of actions called Walk for Our Grandchildren. And um, some people walked 100 miles and some people walked about 65. Oh, hi. Hey, Liam, come on over. <laughs> um, down uh, through Maryland to Washington, D.C. Um, to protest the Keystone XL pipeline. And when we got to D.C., some of us from the walk and some other people who weren't on the walk, uh, 54 of us all together, um, sat in in the offices of ERM, which is the consultant that did the, uh, the um, environmental impact study on which the State Department's report was just based. Um, there had been some talk about conflict of interest, uh, especially Friends of the Earth had done some uh, research and pointed out that on their on ERM's uh, application, they never mentioned that they had done work for uh, TransCanada, which is the company that wants to build the Keystone XL. They've also done work for other you know uh, companies in the oil industry. There was I don't know if anybody saw it. There was a debate this morning on Democracy Now between the head of Friends of the Earth, Eric Pika, and a woman from the um, oil, I forgot, the oil industry, you know, representative. And she was saying, well, of course you want somebody who knows what they're doing to do the, to, to do the environmental impact statement. You have to have somebody who's in the field. But, you know, they never mentioned it on their, on their uh, uh, conflict of interest form. So they're being investigated, um, as was the previous uh, company that did, uh, the consultants that did the um, previous environmental impact statement. So when I was walking, I had my granddaughter Eliza's picture on my shirt. And, um, you know, that was why, that was a big part of why I was walking, not just for her, because, I mean, we're all seeing the impacts already of climate change. Um, the, the gist, as I understand it, of the of the State Department's report is that they're saying it would not building the building the KXL would not have much of an environmental impact because they're saying that all the tar sands are going to come out of the ground anyway, and whether they are transported by you know by uh, um, pipeline or rail or some other way, they're going to be they're going to be leaving Alberta, and I think. We're saying that isn't that isn't really the answer. Um, that if all these tar sands are dug up and and uh, you know um, taken out and uh, burned up, that that is going to greatly raise the um, you know the level of carbon in the air. And it's not just for climate change; it's also for the decimation and total destruction of the land, um, native land in Alberta. I've talked to a lot of people, native people who have, you know, come down to speak about that. And I'm trying to get up there myself, but it's pretty, it's a, it's like a moon, it's like a stinky moonscape. It's really horrendous. And, you know, it's contaminated the water. People are worried um, as it crosses the U.S., uh, people in Nebraska in particular about contamination to, you know, the, the water table and to their own lands. Uh, and it happens a lot. I mean, it's not like a spill is a rare thing. There, it happens a lot. So, and there, the skill, the spill in Kalamazoo has taken over a billion dollars, and it's still not cleaned up. And there's a lot of impacts. I don't. Do, do people know the three women who participated in a nonviolent action about that? Uh, that spill are are being sentenced. I think to either were sentenced to two years or are facing sentencing very soon. So that's something everybody should be aware of. Um, the other thing is that it's supposedly, this isn't a done deal yet. There's many other departments who are federal departments that are supposed to weigh in on this, including you know, the EPA and um, I think uh, Homeland Security and uh, you know, a lot of different departments. It's a, there's a public uh, comment period that starts February 5th, I think, and goes to March 7th. So we have a month, we have about 30 days to lay in on it. Um, you know, I would say it's not looking very good for people who are opposed to this, the construction of this, but um, 
I don't really see an alternative to opposing it and standing with, you know, standing uh, against it and taking other actions that may involve a little more risk. Um, because I've been thinking a lot about the, um, you know, the, the civil rights movement and all the people who died because they were not willing to live, you know, as less than equal citizens. So I really think that that is what it's going to take and that some people are already taking those kind of actions. And uh, several tens of thousands of people said they would participate in civil disobedience if, thing, if this thing is, is approved. So that's a start. And, uh, you know, I just I think it is important that we're here and some people are seeing us. So we'll, um, you know, spread the word as much as we can. And I want to thank everybody.